Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. You know, the other day, President Obama talked about, and his wife, First Lady Michelle Obama, talked about things that happened to them that they viewed as racist. Right? You know, when I'm in a room with black people and we're talking about our experiences, it's amazing how everyone has a story where they were treated as less than, you know, an equal neighbor, an equal citizen, right? A person of the world, right? We all have those stories. As I like to tell people, I was once in court, thought I was getting the black treatment. I don't want to sound too oversensitive here. I'm really not. But I thought that I was being treated differently than the facts of the case. Judge ruled against me. I appealed that preposterous ruling, and the Court of Appeal threw it out. Right? The Court of Appeal found that the court had no basis to make the ruling, which would have been case dispositive, that the court did. I still see this judge from time to time. He knows and I know I got him reversed on appeal. I believe he knows and I know that I was being treated differently than opposing counsel who wasn't African American. Well, the reason I'm dressed like this with this ridiculous New York Giants cap is this is exactly how I was dressed a half an hour ago when I went in my own neighborhood to check on a car I had parked on the street. Still there, by the way, right? I have an old Jag. It's not my main car, so, you know, I park it literally on the street in my neighborhood. It's um, hard to find a park, right? So I park it legally on the street um, somewhere on the block where I live. Depending on where the parking space is, that's where I'll park the car, right? Now, lately it's been raining a lot here in the Bay Area. And let me say, Bay Area, liberal you know, very blue state, Jerry Brown is the governor of California, right? My congressman, Mike Honda, is one of the most liberal congressmen in the United States Congress. So this is a liberal area, right? This morning I go over to my car. Now everyone here knows I'm libertarian, right? What I'm doing with my car is my business. That's the way I see it, not anyone else's, right? I, you know... I believe government should be limited. I don't want to be bothered with a lot of regulation, a lot of agenda. So I go over to my car and I turn over the engine. Right then I move the car to a different parking space just a few feet down the block. So I get out of my car. Right? Keep in mind this is all my car on a public street. So I start walking away. And some guy comes running after me. I'm not kidding. Literally running after me. He yells. Right? He comes out of the apartment complex in front of which my car is legally parked. He runs after me. He says, hey, hey, hold up, hold up. Then he comes over to me. Right? I can't quite tell the guy's motivation. For all I know, this could be a guy asking for directions or some neighborly advice or something like that. So then the guy says to me, hey, is this your car? Right? And I say, yeah, that is my car. So he says, when are you going to move your car? It was a little bit surprising because the tone of voice was belligerent. Right? Also, it's absurd in my world for anyone to be demanding to know when I'm going to move my own car. Right? I, I believe the proper response to a question like that when you have your car on a public street is none of your blank business. Right? Instead, I was in a good mood. It's Sunday morning here. I'm about to watch NFL football. So I actually engaged the guy. Also, I was curious because I've always wondered what it was like for people like Trayvon Martin in encountering these George Zimmerman types. So I say to the guy, I say, look, you know, I'll move my car when I'm ready to do so. This is a public street. You know, I said, it's a public street. My car is lawfully parked. The guy then starts 
BSing. He says, well, you know, there's city ordinances and stuff like that. I said, you know what? I, I move this car every three days. The car hasn't been there for three days. Right? Keep in mind, I've just moved the car to a new parking space. Right? I said, the car hasn't been there for three days. So then I look at the guy. The guy then crosses the line. Right? The guy then says, keep in mind, this is a neighbor who I've never seen before. Right? He's wearing pajama bottoms and a t-shirt. Right? This is not law enforcement wearing law enforcement gear. And even if it were law enforcement, he'd need probable cause, really, to stop me and ask me incorrect questions. The guy then says, do you live here? So I look at the guy. I don't respond. The guy then says, nah, nah, you don't live here. Start shaking his head. Right? Start shaking his head. This is in my neighborhood. Right? I don't even know where he's going with this. Now, if I have one regret from the conversation, it's that I didn't let it continue. Right? I just don't have the patience for foolish conversations like this. I should have let him continue on because it would have been fascinating to hear what this buffoon had to say. Instead, I interrupted him. And I said to him, I said, look, you know, I'm an attorney here in town. I said, why don't you look me up online? Right? Gave him my name, gave him my website, richarddwyer.com. I said, you know, who are you? You know, you, you tell me who you are and what gives you the right to tell me where I can park my car on a public street. But I said, why don't you give me your name? Right? My attitude is, if the guy has a real legal beef, he can give me his name. Right? If he has a real legal beef, he can call the cops, have my car be towed, give them his name. Right? The guy refuses to give me his name. Think about it. Right? Refuses to give me his name. So I take a step forward. And I say to the guy, right, he has a tattoo. So I take a step forward and I say to the guy, hey, well, let me see your tattoo. Let me figure out who you are. I said, you're not law enforcement, are you? He says, I could be. I said, okay, well, you know, just understand I'm going to park my car on a public street where I want to park it. You know, I went further. I had to tell the guy, right, because honestly, I don't have the patience. I had to tell the guy, look, if anything happens to this car, or if you try anything to limit or infringe upon my civil right to park the car on a public street where I want, then I'm going to legally enforce my rights. So the guy then played an interesting card on me. Right? Understand, this guy with this poor attitude was actually physically smaller than me. Right? So you know the rest. The guy then claimed I was coming at him. He said, now you're threatening me. Right? <laughs> Ridiculous. So I looked at the guy, you know, I had to look closely at the guy because I thought, wow, is this guy going to pull out? Keep in mind, I'm just me. I don't have a gun. I don't have a knife or anything. I thought, is this guy who stopped me as I'm walking away in my own neighborhood after checking my own car, right? Who's then asking me improper questions about, you know, uh, where I live. If I live in the neighborhood, and then who's refusing to tell me his name after I've given him my name, right? After I've told him where he could find me online, right? This guy then starts claiming that I'm threatening him, right? It was ridiculous, right? So after the guy starts raising his voice and acting like I'm actually the aggressor here, I'm the one who stopped him and I'm now threatening him, right, for asking him his name, asking him who he is and what gives him the authority to try to tell me where I can park my car on a public street, right? I turned and I just walked away from the guy. I said, all right, take care. Just walked away from the guy, you know. 
made a mental note I'm writing down the guy's description I'm making this video right after the incident right I have no doubt that this guy has some overinflated sense of self I question whether anyone else has been harassed by this guy for parking their car on that public street right no doubt the guy because keep in mind I was in the car started the car up moved into a different location got out the car was walking away no doubt the guy saw me by my car and then decided to come out and somehow thought asking me a taxpaying private citizen whether I lived in the neighborhood was somehow the magic question to ask to get me to move my car to threaten me to intimidate me into doing something that I wasn't legally obligated to do right so just understand from time to time why do I talk about race in America it's because it matters it's because it's situations like this that sometimes escalate into the Trayvon Martin incident the Eric Garner incident right this is the reason why in sports you have african-american athletes wearing I can't breathe shirts right I'm not here accusing everyone of racism but people need to understand that because of the historical in fact really it's just the last few centuries right people who know their history know about Hannibal etc right but it's really because of the imbalance over the last few centuries in power that you have guys like this strangers feeling they can come up to me without any legal authority and then ask me where I live how long I'm gonna keep my private property on a public street right you know the flip side of racism is the ludicrous sense of entitlement right let's just say the guy's tone wasn't friendly let's also say too that I'm having a conversation with the guy where I'm saying nothing threatening I'm not I'm not trying to you know verbally or physically intimidate this guy in fact for part of the conversation I'm deliberately leaning on my car right nonviolence and the guy of course has to play the you're threatening me card has to start raising his voice think about it right so you know Trayvon Martin was faulted for wearing a hoodie I'm sure there's some people who would fault me for wearing what this New York Giants cap maybe or this white shirt that I've worn in several videos right so I hope young guys in that situation understand that they have rights if some buffoon comes up to you and is trying to play the you don't live here card and stuff like that as if as if I would tell the guy where I lived as if that's germane of the conversation as if I have any burden to prove to the guy where I live right if some buffoon like this comes up to you just understand that you have rights you don't even have to engage them in a conversation it's a shame that I didn't have a tape recorder on me at the time maybe I need to start carrying one around because I would have loved to have taped the conversation and then played it back in full unedited to you stuff like this is still happening in America athletes are wearing I can't breathe t-shirts for a reason let me hear from you right whatever your point of view if you feel I shouldn't be parking my car on a public street right <laughs> you know, if you if you feel that this individual was correct that I look like a thug and because I look like a thug I should have fewer civil rights than everyone else right if you think me paying taxes doesn't entitle me to park on public streets I'm helping to finance right if you 
Just want to comment on the fact that old Jags are high maintenance and cost a lot to maintain. Go ahead and do so in the comment section to this video. Let's keep the conversation moving forward. I might have to go try to track down an I Can't Breathe t-shirt. And as I said, I live in an area that, at least image-wise, is supposed to be very liberal. Right? And let me also point out, too, I don't live in Bel Air. I don't live in Beverly Hills. You know, I live really in a middle-class neighborhood. Right? I, you know, I, I, I don't consider my neighborhood to be exclusive. And yet, because I'm dressed like this, and I, you know, was seen by an older car, this lunatic thought he could come up to me and literally ask me black file questions, right? Do you live here? No, you don't live around here. Blah, blah, blah. You know, is this your car? Right? Ludicrous. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.